Hey everyone, in this video, we are gonna be creating a project using ThirdWeb and Foundry. We will build a base ERC721 contract with the drop extension using the ThirdWeb command line interface. We will use Forge as the framework. We will then learn how to test and deploy our contract. Before we jump into creating our contract, please pause the video to go like and comment as this really helps to support our channel. If you'd like to learn more about Web3 development, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel so that you never miss a video. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video and start creating our contract. So to start with, what actually is Foundry slash Forge and why would we use it? So if we go ahead to the Foundry book, so you can get that at book.getfoundry.sh, um, and we'll leave the link down in the description. But essentially, Foundry is a smart contract development tool chain. It helps you to manage your dependencies, compile your projects, run tests, deploys, and lets you interact with the chain from the command line via Solidity scripts. Now that's a lot of words. What actually does it mean? It basically just allows us to do all of the things that we want to do apart from writing the contracts. So you have to have the structure of the contracts in such a way that um, it allows you to deploy them and uh, helps you to run tests, kind of those sort of things. Forge is a command line tool that ships with Foundry and that's what we're actually going to be using in this video. We don't use any of the other tools within Foundry. We're only going to be focusing on Forge as this helps us to test and also deploy our contracts. First, the thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and install Foundry. So in the Foundry book, you're going to go to install, depending on whether you have a Linux, Mac or um, Windows machine, you're going to follow these steps to install Foundry. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to initialize our project. So we're going to run npx third web oh, at latest to install the latest version, create dash dash contract to start the process of creating our contract. Oops, no, enter. And then we're going to name our project. So I'm going to call it ERC721 dash drop. And I'm going to select forge as the framework. And then going to create an ERC721 contract with a drop extension. Now I'm just gonna wait for that to be initialized. And then I'm going to navigate to that project folder that has just been created. And then I'm going to run forge clean, foundry up and forge update. Right, now I'm gonna open up the contract in my code editor. Inside your source folder, you'll find contract.sol. Here you'll see your ERC721 drop contract code. So the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to add a standard mint function underneath the constructor. So we're going to write function mint which takes an address called two. Oh, that's not how you spell address. Address two. So the, the address that you want to mint the NFTs to, NFT or NFTs, and then a uint 256 called amount. And that's the amount of tokens that you want to mint. So all that this function is going to do is it's going to have a require statement that just checks that the number of NFTs or tokens that you're trying to mint is at least one, so more than zero. So we're going to say that amount has got to be more than zero. We're just gonna add a revert message. So that will be something like, you must mint at least one token. Perfect. Then we're just going to do an implementation of the safe mint function within this function. Safe mint, which takes two and amount. Oh, no, that's got to be an underscore. The, other th the last thing that we need to do is we need to set the state visibility of this function, which is going to be set to external. 
Now we're going to test this function using Forge. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to open up our test folder and open it this contract.t.sol. Now the first problem that we've got is this error message. All that this is, is that we need to create a remappings. Now, you might think that you want to put it in the, under remappings in foundry.toml, but we don't. We want to create a new file and we want to call this remappings, remappings.txt. And in, in here, we are just going to put forge dash std, std slash equals lib slash forge std slash src. And we're going to save that. And the error is removed. Awesome. Right. So as you can see, this file imports the test library from Forge. The other file that we're going to want to import is our contract just so that we can interact with it in this test file. So we're going to write import dot dot slash src slash contract dot sol. The first thing that we are going to want to do is declare our contract. So we are going to make a variable called drop, which is our contract. So it's going to be contract drop. Oops, drop. The second thing we are going to want to do is we're going to want to make an address to interact with our function. So we are actually going to use a helper function to do that called make adder. And this just allows us to create a dummy address. So we're going to create an address variable. We're going to call it test adder. And we're going to initialize that to make adder. And we can call this anything we want. But for this example, I'm literally just going to call it test. Awesome. Right. Now we're going to inside our setup function, we are going to initialize our contract. So we're going to say drop equals to a new instance of our contract. And, and inside here, we're going to set the construct arguments. So we're going to call this mint test. That's the name, the symbol to MT, the royalty recipient. the royalties and the primary sale recipient. You can kind of just put this number and you know, all these, these variables, you can set anything you want, but that's essentially what we want to be doing. So now we have initialized our contract. We are now going to make a test to test the mint function that we just created. So we are gonna create a test function called test drop with zero tokens. And this does exactly what you think it's going to. So we're gonna set the state visibility to public. And what we are going to do is we're going to say, we're going to try and mint a token, but say that we're minting zero tokens and check that the behavior is as expected. So luckily Forge or Foundry has what's called cheat codes and this enables us to write tests really easily and quickly. This is the bonus of Foundry. Foundry allows you to write your tests in Solidity, whereas other frameworks require you to write your tests in a different language. Given that we're going to be able to use these cheat codes, the cheat code that we're going to want to be using is expect revert. So we're going to write vm dot expect revert. And inside here, we're going to put the revert message that we would expect, which we wrote earlier. So it was, you must mint at least one token. So the, the way that expect revert works is that you call expect revert and then the code that is written, the line immediately afterwards, it is looking to see if that line of code reverts. So the line of code that we're going to want to revert is trying to mint from our drop contract to our test address, to our test address with zero tokens. So we're going to want this 
this line of code to revert with this message. The final thing that we want to do is we want to check that this did not happen and it did in fact revert. So we want to check that the balance of the address that we tried to mint to is zero. And we're going to do that by saying assert equal that the balance of the test address is in fact zero. Awesome. I'm now going to copy the same exact test, but test it now for if I was trying to mint, for example, two tokens and check that this does in fact mint two tokens. We're not expecting it to revert, we are expecting it to mint the tokens. The final thing that we want to do is we just want to remove this dummy test. Now we want to run our tests and check that they all pass because when you are writing your tests, when you're designing tests, you need to make sure that the behavior of the test is such that that pass is the expected behavior. So you wouldn't want it to revert, therefore fail. And that's why we've used this helper function to say, yep, it reverted as expected. So all of your tests need to be green. Awesome. So we're going to run forge test. Oh, I've spelled it wrong. Right. Problems of a programmer who is also dyslexic don't spell things wrong. So <laughs> ensuring that you have definitely spelt everything correctly, you are now going to run a forge test and hopefully all your tests will have passed. Yay. So the final thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to deploy our contract. Now, the way to do this with Third Web is super duper easy and really, really clean. No need for scripting or anything like that. We just need to run npx Third Web at latest. Again, deploy. What this command will do is when it, when it has finished compiling and deploying, it will then pop up on your dashboard, your contract. So then you can select the constructor argument. So we're going to give it a name, um, ERC721 drop. Oh, that's not how you spell drop. We're going to call it, the symbol is just going to be um, ERC. For the, for the royalty address, I'm just going to use my address, my test address. For the royalties, I'm just going to say 500. And then for the primary sale recipient, I'm just going to put my test address again. We are now going to deploy our contract to Gurley Testnet. And we're going to put it on a test net because it's a test. We don't want to be paying any gas fees, real gas fees. Make sure when you're doing this, though, that you do have girly ETH and you can use a faucet to, in which to obtain your girly ETH. So we're going to click deploy now. And it's going to ask me to confirm the transaction. And then it should do another transaction in a minute. So this is going to trigger two sets of transactions. Cool. It has now done two transactions, so it should now deploy. If you want to see the status, you can click up into your MetaMask or wherever your wallet is, and you can see the status of the different transactions you are waiting for. On your dashboard, you will now be able to see your contract that you have newly deployed. In the Explorer, you'll be able to see all of the functions on that contract. You'll be able to see any events triggered on the contract, the NFTs minted on the, the contract. You can set claim conditions. You can see some code examples of how you could maybe integrate your contract into your front end in all different languages. Um, you can also then see the source code of your contract. Congratulations, you have successfully created and deployed your very own ERC721 drop contract using Third Web and Forge. If you have any questions about today's video or something didn't quite make sense or you came across some roadblocks, then in the link in the description, you'll find our Discord where you can speak directly to the Third Web team and we'd be happy to answer any, any of your questions or queries that you have. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please give it a like and also subscribe so that you're the first to see all the new content and upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and following along and I'll see you in the next one.